Hi, I'm Andrew Connell, and I'm an MVP for Office Servers and Services and Office Development. In this module, we're going to look at building an Office add-in using some modern JavaScript tools and techniques. Specifically, in this module, we're going to look at using React. We're going to talk about just an overview of what React is in a React 101, building add-ins with React, sideloading and debugging, and then an overview of the sample that you'll build in the lab. We're going to start our journey into modern client frameworks and add-ins with React. Of all the client-side frameworks, React has a first-class ticket uh, for Office add-in developers. You're going to see that React has a template in the Office Yeoman generator and is highly supported by the Office UI fabric. React is a popular component-based JavaScript library that's built and maintained by Facebook. React leverages a virtual DOM to perform dynamic partial rendering of web content. With React, everything is in JavaScript. Even markup is represented as JavaScript via a JSX file or the JSX syntax. React perhaps is most loved for its rich hierarchy of reusable components. Here's a very basic Hello World React application. Now, although it's just a fraction of React's capabilities, this is gonna highlight some of the key concepts. And it's something that you can copy into a code pen or a uh, JS fiddle and run with it. The sample is going to create an app component that has a single title property. The very bottom of the sample shows how we can use React to bootstrap this app component to an element in the DOM. Now, notice how the render function returns markup. Uh, specifically, it's returning back JSX. The JSX syntax is a mix of HTML and JavaScript. You're going to notice a reference to both properties and the state. Properties are just that. They're properties of the component while the state is sort of an in-memory property. I say in-memory because the state is a live bound. Uh, you're gonna update it, and the element, element will immediately update based on those changes from the state. Now, there are two approaches to building add-ins with React. You can build a project, or you can convert an existing project. For a new project, the Office Yeoman Generator has a great React template that you can leverage to immediately get going. For existing projects, though, that need to be converted, you can still use the Office Yeoman Generator to generate the add-in XML manifest. Um, you're also going to need to convert the web application to use SSL as add-ins won't load from a normal HTTP page. They must be HTTPS. Now, depending on the existing solution, this might be as simple as flipping an SSL flag, but in worst case, it's going to involve creating a self-signed certificate. You're also going to need to add references to the Office JS and the Office UI Fabric React. One of the most important aspects to, of using a modern client side, a client side framework with Office add-ins is how the framework is bootstrapped in the markup. So every page that loads the add-in must call the function office.initialize before running any other scripts. Uh, it's a best practice to bootstrap the main React component to the DOM within the Office Initialize callback, as you see here. The Office client that hosts the add-in is going to call this initialize function, and this must finish within five seconds. If it doesn't, then it's going to throw an error. The Office client application is going to throw an error, and it's going to say that there's an issue with the add-in itself. Uh, and that's going to make it so that the customer doesn't think that Outlook or Word or Excel is having a problem, that it's the actual add-in that's having a problem. React applications are perfectly positioned to use the Office UI fabric as well. Uh, it's a design language from the OneDrive Studio team uh, that's used across Office 365, Office Clients, SharePoint, Exchange, etc. Uh, in fact, all of the Office UI fabric components are built with React, and they even have typings for TypeScript. You're going to see a few of these components that are leveraged in the demonstration in just a moment. Now, for sideloading and debugging React apps, you're going to have a couple different options based on your developer environment. Office Online is available to all developer environments, and it involves uploading an, an add-in XML manifest through the new Office document uh, or in an, a new Office document in Office Online via OneDrive. Uh, debugging can be done with the browser's developer tools. For Windows users, you can also sideload the add-in by creating a virtual network share or a, log a local network share place the add-ins XML manifest in that share, and then configure the Office clients to look for add-ins in that location. Uh, you're going to do that via the trusted add-in catalog settings of Trust Center within the Office client. Visual Studio users can even attach a debugger to task pane add-ins that are running the Win32 Office client. For the first demo, we're going to look at building an Office add-in using React. 
Now, of the three frameworks that we're going to explore, React is the first class citizen for building Office add-ins. And we say that because you're going to be able to provision a, a React project using the Yeoman generator, and you're going to be able to natively use the Office UI fabric uh, for React. So we're going to start this by starting the Yeoman generator by saying Yo Office to provision a new project. And I'm just going to create a new subfolder for my project and call it the React Excel portfolio. And for the client application, I'll choose Excel. I do want a new web application. I am going to use TypeScript. And here I can choose between different frameworks to use. I can use React, jQuery, or Angular. Now, it's important to note that that is not Angular uh, v2, v4, v5, not the latest and greatest. It's Angular JS, which is version uh, 1.x. In this case, we're going to go with React. And then at the end, I'm going to say uh, that I don't want to open the readme file. And so I'm going to let it go through and provision the project scaffolding. And then it's going to run npm install to download all of the necessary packages. OK, so the open generator and npm install has uh, completed. So I'm going to change directories to go into my new project folder and open it up in Visual Studio Code. Now, there's two key things to point out here in this project in Visual Studio Code. If you go into the source and the main TSX file, you'll notice that we have the um, bootstrapping code for our root application component inside of office.initialize. And it's bootstrapping it into the container, which is inside of our HTML, we'll have a div with the container ID. And we're just using a query selector off the document object from DOM. The office initialize function is where we're going to be doing our initialization. Um, this is key because office.initialize is the first script that needs to run within the office application. And the reason for this is because it's going to bootstrap it within five seconds. So we have to make sure that that happens first. The second thing that we need to notice is that we have a bunch of components that have already been created. Uh, we've got an app component, which is what you're seeing here. We have a header component, a hero list, and a progress component. And each one of these are components that have been provisioned by the Yeoman generator uh, template that was created for us. One of the nice things about this template is it's already been set up with uh, Webpack so that it's going to have everything that packaged nicely, compiled nicely, and be ready to uh, be running. So let's jump over to a completed version of this project, uh, this demo. And now there's a few things I want to highlight and kind of point out here. Let's take a look at a component. You can see we got a couple of components that we've actually modified. So we have a stock item TSX uh, component, and this represents our stock that we're tracking here. Um, we have a refresh button and a delete button for each one of those. Um, I've also got a wait, waiting component. And it puts together a few additional little pieces too. If we take a look at this, uh, you'll see that it's using a uh, an overlay and a spinner. Um, these are components that are coming from the Office UI fabric uh, for React or React uh, Fabric React. And you can see how these are being imported and being used here because then I don't have to recreate these myself. I can use the same kind of components that are being used inside of uh, the Office UI fabric, um, and it feels very native to the application. Now, if I jump over here to the utils, you'll see I have an Excel, Excel table util.ts file. And we have a couple of things here, like creating a table is uh, asynchronously creating a table using the Excel context and then uh, getting an active worksheet. Um, we have here for ensuring that the table has been created. I got a function here for adding a row where I'm passing the data in. And this is going to be getting a reference to that table and adding a row to that table. Here's another function for get column data, which is going to get data from a specific column. Um, here's a function for deleting a row and then one for also updating a cell inside of Excel. And so all these functions are going to be used to develop to deliver the functionality within inside uh, this add in. So and in, in order to use this add-in, I'm going to first have to go through and run npm start uh, to fire up a little web server to host our uh, web application that's going to, to be used to implement the application. So what's first going to happen is it's going to compile it, and then it's, and using Webpack, it's going to create a bundle or a single script file. Um, it's going to have all of our assets in it. And then once we've actually 
um, started this web server will then be able to sideload this application uh, into Excel. So you might get this page that says your connection is not private. Um, what this is saying is that the SSL certificate is not trusted um, inside of the, your browser. And so what you want to do is say, I want to proceed to localhost, which is unsafe. And all that's going to do is just let Excel, uh, let this page load um, because it's in an unsafe mode, but that's okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sideload this into Excel. So what I'm going to do is go back over to my OneDrive and create a new Excel file. Here's my new Excel workbook that I have. And now this is going to give me the ability to sideload this application. So I'm going to go to the insert tab and click the office add-ins button. And you can see I don't have any add-ins that are installed, but I can upload my so I'll choose that. And this will allows me to browse out to the manifest file. Now, if I were to go back to Visual Studio Code, when I ran my generator, it created an XML manifest file for me that's already set up. So I'm going to go browse to this file, go find my manifest and upload it. And now you can see that my, that my add-in has now been uploaded over here off to the right-hand side. So I'm going to click on my add-in command. That's going to open up my add-in. And you can see it's open up over here on the right-hand side. Now, the way this add-in is going to function is that I'm going to pass in a couple different stocks that I want to track. So I'll type in MSFT to track a stock. You can see that our overlay and our spinner is actually working. Um, that's going to add in a new stock to our Excel uh, into our Excel table. So I'll now add Facebook. Let me see a Facebook quote showing up there. And then I'll also do uh, another one here for Exxon. So XOM. Now, one of the cool things about this is that not only can I add stocks, but I can also refresh these. So like if I clear out the Microsoft last price, I can come over here and click the refresh button inside of my add-in and you can see that it updated the new stock price or the current stock price. Um, the other thing that it did is that it put some formulas in. So if I went in and changed the quantities for say Microsoft stock, I'm going to put in a hundred shares and I paid $50 for each one. You can see that it's figuring out my total gain is putting my um, total gain both in dollars and percentage and value. But you can see here that it actually added in some formulas here for me. The other thing I can do is I can also delete items. So if I click on the delete, it will, as you see on the table on the left hand side, it's deleting uh, my, uh, my stock that I just had. So I can also refresh my add in. So if I right click on this and say reload frame, what you see when it loads is it's actually looking at the table and it's pulling in the stocks that are already inside uh, the table. So there's like a little synchronized function uh, in the application that's going to be fetching that for me. So this is the add-in that's using React. And as you can, if you want to see how to build this, there's a lab associated with this that you can uh, walk through to um, build the add-in. In this second section, we're going to talk about building an Office add-in using Angular. So we're going to do a quick Angular 101, building add-ins with Angular, sideloading and debugging, and an overview of the sample. So the second client-side framework that we're going to explore here for building Office add-ins is Angular. Angular is widely popular. Uh, it's a widely popular front-end framework that's open-sourced and originated from Google. It's important to note that Angular is a completely different framework from something you might have heard of called AngularJS, and it was built uh, new from the ground up. Uh, Angular is often referred to as Angular 2. The 2 being is that it's different uh, than the way it was before uh, with AngularJS or Angular 4, which is technically the most current Angular library. That's Angular uh, 4.0 uh, with Angular 5.0 right around the corner. Angular has a number of differences from AngularJS. Uh, one of the most notable is that Angular is based heavily on TypeScript, which includes uh, the framework itself and all the documentations uh, and samples. Again, Angular is not the same or a derivative of AngularJS. So AngularJS is everything that was version one of Angular, uh, all the way up to, but not including version two. Angular, without the JS in the name, refers to Angular 2 and all future versions. So Angular 2.0, Angular 4.0, and again, upcoming releases like Angular 5. When you compare the two, Angular and AngularJS, you're going to find that Angular has no concept of a scope or a controller. 
uh, that was really foundational in AngularJS. Instead, Angular leveraged a component hierarchy. In the markup, you're going to find the attribute directives are also completely different. You're going to be using things like square brackets for property bindings and parentheses for event binding. Angular is much more modular than AngularJS, and it has much better performance, improved dependency injection, and a much cleaner routing story. Ultimately, it's much better positioned to deliver large, complex uh, development applications when you compare it to something like Angular. This is a very basic Hello World Angular application. Now, although it's just a fraction of the capabilities, it's going to highlight some of the key components or concepts. And it's something that you should uh, be able to easily run in a code pen or plunker or uh, JS fiddle. First of all, notice how the Angular attribute directives are prefixed with a star, as you can see with the ng4 and the ngif. You can also see how events are different, such as the key up, the key up markup uh, event on the input. The code in this sample is in TypeScript, as that is going to define the class component that you see there on the, the bottom called app component. And as, as mentioned earlier, Angular is much more modular. So where you can now import more granular parts of the framework to keep the solution nice and lean. Now, when you build an Office add-in with Angular, you have two different approaches. You can start with a new project or you can convert an existing application to host the add-in. For a new application, it's advisable that you use the Angular CLI to provision the template as this is really gonna simplify a lot of the moving parts. After the Angular CI, CLI completes, you can then run the Office Yeoman generator for provisioning an add-in XML manifest for the project. You're gonna to need to convert the project to run on SSL, which is like an easy update to the startup script uh, in the package.json. Uh, and then you're gonna to need to add the dependencies to Office JS and the Office UI fabric. It's also important you bootstrap the app component. Uh, and, you, and you bootstrap it correctly. But we're going to cover that on the next slide in just a minute. For existing projects, you're going to want to follow almost the exact same steps as a new project, except you're just going to remove the Angular CLI process. Now, one of the most important aspects of using a modern client-side framework with Office add-ins is how the framework is bootstrapped to the markup. Every page that loads in the add-in must call the office initialize before running other scripts. We saw this earlier when we looked at, at React.js. It's a best practice to bootstrap the Angular application to the DOM within the office initialize callback, as you see here. For a project that's provisioned with the Angular CLI, this is most likely gonna be in the main TS file that's gonna be the entry point for the application. Now, Microsoft has clearly committed React as the, or committed to React as the, uh, for the Office UI fabric in building all their components. However, that doesn't mean you can't leverage in, in an Angular project. In fact, AngularJS, the, for AngularJS, the community built a large number of AngularJS directives for the Office UI fabric. Now, although these can't easily be leveraged in Angular and there's no grassroots efforts uh, yet uh, to upgrade them, you can wrap the React components in Angular components. There is a sample of this referenced in the additional reading uh, that you'll find for this deck. So you'll also you can also easily incorporate the Office UI Fabric core styles, which are just CSS styles that include styles and icons and typography, brand icons, colors, grids, and even more stuff. Now for side loading and debugging Angular add-ins, the approach is the same as it is with React. The Office Online is available to all developer environments as it involves uploading the add-in XML manifest through a new Office document via the Office Online, uh, via OneDrive. Debugging can be done with the browser developer tools. For Windows users, you can sideload the add-in by creating a local network share, placing the add-in XML manifest in that share, and then configuring the Office client to look for the add-in in this location via the trusted add-in catalog settings of Trust Center. Visual Studio users can even attach a debugger to the task pane add-ins that are running the Win32 Office client. So in this demo, we're gonna look at building an Office add-in using Angular. Now, the Office Yeoman generator has an Angular template, but the template is for AngularJS, which is Angular 1.x. And so in this case, in order to provision our project to have all of the dependencies and Webpack and uh, the hosting and all that stuff in place that we need, 
we're going to actually use the Angular CLI uh, to do that, which is going to give us the latest version of Angular. So I'm going to do that by writing ng new, which is going to be using the Angular CLI to create a new project. And I'm going to call this ng dash Excel portfolio. So this is going to be using the Angular CLI again to provision my project. And then it's going to install all the packages uh, from NPM. And then later we're going to use the Yeoman generator to get an XML manifest file for our add-in uh, in order to sideload. So I'm going to go ahead and let this um, process complete of downloading all the different packages. So everything has finished uh, downloading all the packages. So let's change um, directories over to it. And now what I want to do is run the Office Yeoman generator on top of this uh, to create that NPM package that we're going to need. So it's going to ask us, do I want to create a new subfolder? And the answer is no, because I want to stay in my existing folder that I'm already in. What do you want to name it? I'll call this the Angular Excel at or Excel portfolio. Um, it's an Excel application. And it's going to say, do you, do you want to create the, a new add-in? And I said, no, I don't want to. I just want the manifest file for my add-in. So that's you can see that the Yeoman generator gives me the ability to either scaffold a whole project or just the um, XML file. So I'll go ahead and finish this off. And it's going to ask me, do I want to go ahead and overwrite um, package.json? I do not want to do that because I've already let the NPM or the uh, Angular CLI to do that for me. So this one's going to um, be... It's fairly quick because it's just going to be adding in a few different assets for us. And it's going to add in, as you can see here, a couple images, um, the XML file, and then also a resource.html file for some stuff about it. So our manifest file has been created. So I'm going to go ahead and open up our project in Visual Studio Code. So here's our project. This is our bare bones project for our Excel add-in. Now, in order for us to get this working as an office add-in, there's a few changes I'm going to want to make to the project itself. So if I look at the XML file that was created for the manifest, what you're going to notice is that it's using port 3000 uh, for our application. Well, by default, the Angular CLI is not using port 3000. It's also not using HTTPS. So um, that's, a, that's a prerequisite for using an office add-in. So to change that, what I'm going to do is come over here into package.json. I'm going to I'm going to update the start script. So I'm going to tell it that I want it to use SSL. So that's going to switch it from HTTP to HTTPS. And then I'm also going to force the port to be port 3000 for our Angular application. So that's just telling the Angular CLI that when you spin this guy up, I want you to use um, a couple different settings than you normally do by default. Now, the next thing I want to do while we're here inside package.json, um, I can also pull in some additional dependencies to work with Office JS. So here inside of the dependencies, I'm going to pull in the types uh, for Office JS um, because we're working with TypeScript here. So I'll pull these types in for us, which is just at types slash Office JS. And I'll just grab the most, re most recent version of it. So the next thing I probably want to do is want to add in the Office JS um, script references to our page. So I could add them in using the index.html file to add them here, and I can also do it inside the Webpack uh, configuration. But I'm just going to do it here inside of this um, uh, inside this index.html file. So make sure to grab the latest and greatest of Office JS inside of my uh, project. Now, the other thing I want to do is I'm also going to want to bootstrap Angular inside of my project um, using that office.initialize as we talked about in one of the previous demos. Now, the way, the place I'm going to do that is inside of the main.ts. And what you can see with this Angular app, you can see where I'm bootstrapping it using the platform browser dynamic. So what I want to do is I'm going to want to surround this with office.initialize. So I'll say office.initialize and then make this an anonymous function that's going to then set this to bootstrap our application inside of off inside the office initialize. So here you can see it's not finding our type definitions. So I can go ahead and add a reference to it by just saying a reference. And then here I'm just going to go straight to my node modules folder uh, to do this by doing dot dot slash node modules at types and office.js and do index.d.ts. 
So this isn't going to work here because I never did an npm install for this. So let me go back and actually run an npm install to go grab our typings file. So I'm going to go back to my console and just type in npm install to pull in our definition. Okay, so now that we have our typings file has been installed, so now you can see it's resolving, so we're in good shape. So let's jump over to the, to the completed solution now that we can see how we've set this up. Uh, if you want to see how to build the entire application, go ahead and take a look at the lab associated with this demo. Um, but I'm going to look, we're going to look at the one that's already been set up here. So let's go ahead and look at our application that we've created. So I'm going to go open up the um, app component.html where most of our functionality is. So this could be broken up into multiple components if you wanted to, but in this case here, I just left it as one for simplicity. So you can see here we have our waiting indicator uh, with an overlay and a spinner. Um, now these are not using the Office UI Fabric React components or Fabric React. Um, you could do that, but in this case here, I'm not. Um, in this case, what I, what I could do is I could use the Office UI Fabric uh, just using the the core CSS style. So you can see here, that's what I'm doing here on lines like 11 um, and a couple other ones where you see this MS dash uh, prefix. And I'm just using these styles coming out of the Office UI fabric, just the core CSS. Now, if you look at my utilities, if you, you know, compare to our previous uh, demo that we looked at before with React, um, you can see here where I'm initializing the utility and then having different functions for creating the table, ensuring the table, adding a row, getting a column data, deleting a row, updating a cell. Those are all the functions that we need for our add-in to actually function and work. Now to run this, the way this is gonna work, it's gonna work the exact same way as the React component that we did. So um, if we jump back over here to package.json, we have that start um, function that's gonna go kick everything off. So I'm just gonna say npm start, that's gonna use the Angular CLI to start the local web server and configure it for HTTPS and a specific port. So I'll just say npm start. Now that it's finishing up, doing all of our additional kind of like comp compilation process and using Webpack to create a single bundle here. So there we go, Webpack is now complete and uh, successful in its build. Now there's two quick things I'm gonna need to do. Now, first I'm gonna jump over to a browser and I'm gonna refresh our, uh, remember this is our React component we just looked at a few minutes ago. We're using the exact same port. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna refresh the page. Uh, so this is just using the same, this is using this exact same port from our Angular CLI. And then what you're gonna see is I'm really getting the same error message here from the private connection bit. And it's because I'm using a different self-signed cert that um, the Angular CLI provides compared to the one that the off, that the Yeoman generator uh, created for us. So to go through that piece, you can see it just loaded. And in here, I'm not even going to need to side load our manifest again because it's really using the exact same um, URI as our manifest. We're just hosting the application from somewhere else. So I should just have to refresh the page here. And we see our task pane is showing up inside the com our custom little uh, command prompt or, or a ribbon. So here we've got our add-in running. Now it looks almost identical to what we had in React, um, but what you'll notice is there's a few different things that we might notice, but it really, it's the exact same thing because we're just using a different web framework. You notice the spinner's a little bit different. Um, our overlay is a little bit different as well, but the functionality is basically the exact same. So here, I'm gonna add a couple things here, like adding in uh, Facebook and Microsoft stocks. I can delete these and it works the exact same way as before. If I reload the frame here, remember it's going to also synchronize and find our uh, button or our stock that we had here. Um, again here, if you remember, if I go through and I reset the price to something else and then hit refresh, it will grab the latest price. And so there's our add-in running from Angular. Now in this last section, let's look at building an add-in using a library called Vue.js. So we're gonna do a little 101, building the add-in with Vue.js, talk about side loading and debugging, and then an overview of the sample. This last library we're gonna look at is called Vue.js. And Vue.js is pronounced just Vue, as in V-I-E-W. It's an open source JavaScript framework that is gaining in popularity, and it really is a good replacement for things like Knockout. Unlike Angular, which completely takes the front end, uh, Vue is just designed to be incrementally adoptable and can integrate more easily with other JavaScript libraries. Originally created by developing and by developers uh, working at Google with AngularJS, Vue incorporates many of the best things around AngularJS and React. 
The core view library is really focused on the view layer of MVC of an MVC application, hence the name view, because view is easy to leverage without TypeScript and the ability and its ability to use standard HTML templates. View is also is often perceived as having a shorter learning curve compared to something like Angular or React. Now, this again is a very basic hello world view application. And it's although it's just a fraction of the things we can do with view, this highlights some of the key concepts. And it's something that you could just copy into the code pen and run with. Notice how the view object uh, is bound to the DOM by associating it with a specific selector element. In this case, the uh, uh, element called app or with an ID of app. View leverages the uh, attribute directives very similar to AngularJS. Notice the directives such as vModel, v4, and vOn. Also notice how view uses a double brackets to output data uh, that's associated with the view object. There are two approaches to building an Office add-in with view. First, there's building an Office add-in from a new project. Uh, to do this, you can either use the view CLI or you can use the Office Yeoman generator. The generator doesn't have a view template, but you can select a different template such as jQuery and convert it to use view. That approach has a few important considerations. Uh, first of all, the TypeScript compiler, assuming you build it with TypeScript, needs to know how to handle the view component files. Secondly, the only React, uh, sorry, only the React, let me say it again. Secondly, the only React template in Yeoman uh, is going to use, let me say it again. Secondly, only the React template in Yeoman uses Webpack. So you're might going to need to configure Webpack. The instructions for this uh, on how to do this are covered very well in the lab that demonstrate uh, that that demonstrate how to do that. Uh, so you just refer to the lab associated with this module. The second approach is converting an existing view project to deliver an Office add-in. This approach is very similar to using the view CLI. Ultimately, you're going to need to convert the solution to debug with SSL as Office add-ins are required to use SSL. Depending on your local hosting configuration, this could be as easy as flipping an SSL flag or as complex as creating a self-signed certificate for the web app. And it sounds familiar with what we did with the React and the Angular version. You also need to run the Office Yeoman generator to at least provision an Office XML manifest and add references to Office JS and the Office UI fabric within your project. And just like the other two frameworks we've looked at, the most important aspect of using a modern client-side framework with Office add-ins is how the framework is bootstrapped to the markup. Every page that loads the add-in must call Office Initialize before running the other scripts. It's a best practice to bootstrap view to the DOM within the Office Initialize callback, as you can see here. Now, the Office UI Fabric doesn't offer any view components, but you can deliver a hybrid approach of wrapping React components and view components. Or you can leverage the Office UI Fabric core CSS styles that include things like styles, colors, icons, typography, etc. These can very easily be leveraged in custom view components. Now, for side loading and debugging view add ins, the approach is really the same. Office Online is available to all developer environments as it involves uploading the add-in XML manifest through a new Office document in Office Online via OneDrive. Debugging can be done within the browser developer tools. For Windows users, you can sideload the add-in by creating a local network share, place the XML add-in manifest in that share and configuring the Office client to look for those in this location. Again, just like the other examples we've seen using the trusted add-in catalog settings within Trust Center in the Office client. Visual Studio users can even attach a debugger to the task pane add-ins running the Win32 Office client. Okay, so in this demo, we're going to look at building an Office add-in using Vue.js. So Vue does not have a template uh, in the Office Yeoman generator. So there's a few different approaches that we can take to creating an Office add-in using Vue. Um, the first one that we can do is we can use the Vue CLI, which is provided to us from uh, uh, the same approach that we use for the Angular one. So we can use a CLI to create the project and then use the Yeoman generator to create the add-in manifest for us. Another approach that you could take with this is to go with one of the more generic templates from the Office Yeoman generator. 
like say the jQuery template, and then convert that to use view. And that's the approach that we're using the lab just to show you yet a, uh, or get a full spectrum of options that are available to you because we saw how to do that, that first option using the Angular one. So I'm not gonna show you how to do that so much in this demo. I wanna show you some of the more unique things that you're gonna to have to do in this demo or in, this, in the lab associated. So here, if I come over here and look inside the package.json, you'll see that I've added in view and a view class component. So what this is, is this is gonna allow us when using TypeScript uh, to build really nice components inside a uh, view. And it's very similar to how Angular and React uh, provide, what they provide us. So it's gonna allow us to create these .view files which encapsulate both our markup and the TypeScript uh, that is gonna provide the functionality. Now, because this is TypeScript, I do need to grab uh, some additional uh, things like Webpack, um, the view loader. What this is doing is it's using the, the jQuery template uh, when we did the Yeoman generator. But unfortunately, that template does everything in a single script file, so it doesn't use Webpack. But in this case here, I really want to use multiple TypeScript files. Um, and so Webpack is gonna be a, an important component here. So I'm using Webpack, I'm also using a view loader, a view template compiler, and a TypeScript loader. And those are all going to tell Webpack how to compile things together and put it all together. Webpack's gonna look for things like loader and pull those things in. And the, what this is gonna do is it's also gonna look at those files that are named with a .vue extension and knows how to compile those as views and uh, and uh, put those inside of a single bundle. Now, if you look at our Webpack config, you can see where I'm looking for TypeScript files and view files, and I'm associating them with that specific loader. And all of those are gonna get pulled into our, our final script file, which is our, our big bundle that Webpack is gonna be creating. Um, you can also see that I'm actually, I'm also bundling in uh, view as well into my package. Now, the next most important thing that you need to do when you create a view project is if you look inside the source folder, you're gonna need a TypeScript file that's going to tell the TypeScript file um, that tells TypeScript to treat the view files as TypeScript files. And that's different from Webpack because Webpack's doing the final configuration or bundling, but it's telling, this, uh, telling TypeScript a little bit differently. And what this one does is it says, it's saying anything that you find this .view extension, I wanna treat it as TypeScript. So this is declaring a module, all everything is view, and I'm, I'm pulling it in the file is called the sfc.d.ts, and it's really just a bridge for TypeScript to say treat these as TypeScript files. Now to show these, if I go under the components folder, you can see I have a bunch of these .view files. And it's gonna look very similar to what you might have in React or in an Angular application if you start breaking things up into more, compo more component-based stuff. So I have a root component, I have a stock component, I have a header component, and I have a waiting component. We looked at our waiting component earlier. This is the one that's the probably the simplest one to show. You can see I've got a template with an overlay and a spinner, and then right below it inside the TypeScript code, you can see where I've got my uh, import statements and I'm declaring a component to actually pull these things and use the component directive or decorator. But if you look at a more complicated one like stock.view, here you can see we have a, uh, a something that essentially represents a row. Uh, each row is gonna be a stock. So we here have an item row. And then inside of this, I've got a couple buttons. So here's some view syntax where I have v-on uh, and that's these are on click events inside of view and ultimately what these are doing is I'm going to be emitting these events up to the parent so like refresh symbol you can see what these different click events are called they're actually going to call these methods refresh symbol and uh, delete symbol and it's going to emit these events up to the parent so the parent can choose what needs to happen so the root component what this is really gonna give us the ability to do is to bring it all together. So you can see here in the root, we have our waiting component, we have our stock component um, that we're binding different things to. So we have, I've got this v-bind syntax where I'm binding a symbol to a key, a symbol to a symbol. I've also got a for loop that I'm using where I'm doing an, um, looping through each one of our different symbols. 
And then I'm also binding my different refresh events. So I'm refreshing this symbol and I'm um, also deleting this symbol here. Now, this is going to be served up identically to how we've done the other projects um, using an NPM start. Now, there is one thing that I do want to point out here is that if I look at package.json, you are going to have to tweak some of the scripts, um, specifically the start script you see here on line 10. But it's, you want to make sure you configure it to use Webpack. And you see I'm passing in the Webpack configuration file uh, to do that. That's something else I've added. So let's go see this and let's go ahead and run this. So I'm going to go to my command prompt and do an npm start. And again, if you want to see how to do, make all these changes and build this thing up, you, there's a lab um, associated uh, with this demo that will walk you through all of these steps. So what this is doing first is using Webpack to compile everything and then bundle it all up. And again, it's going to bring up our default page. Again, this is using our different uh, our different SSL certificate, so it wasn't trustworthy at first. Now, nothing's going to load initially because nothing is really running inside of Office, and there's no default view for this uh, in this case here. Actually, there's one more thing I do want to point out here, if, is if you come back here to our, our project real quick, let's take a look at our bootstrapping process. See, if you look at our app.ts file, you can see the very first script that's running is office.initialize, and here I'm creating our view application and I'm bootstrapping it to a specific application. So create a new view application. And then the element that it's associated with is the app. And then I'm going to render out the root element inside of that element. And the component is our root component. Um, that's coming from our root.view, as you see there, it's highlighted on line four. So that's how our application is being uh, wired up. And that, that office initialize is very important. That's the very first thing that runs. Now, because office.initialize is running first, that's why we're getting a blank page here in the browser because office doesn't exist. It doesn't run in a normal browser. It only, it, it only runs inside the browser that is hosting a office uh, web application or uh, office client. So let me go ahead and refresh this, this page here because again, I'm using the similar you know paths and, and uh, URLs and ports, so I don't need to re uh, sideload my application um, because it already knows about the application. It knows it's in the same location. So here I can go see my app. My button is still there in the ribbon. I click the button and it will open it up inside the um, button. Notice that that first stock that it has here from the same spreadsheet we had earlier. Um, you've got our Microsoft um, stock that's showing up. Now it looks the exact same because we've implemented the same thing, um, but it's cool because you, you know this is actually being using Vue to do this. So here I can go through and I can add another stock, like I'm adding Facebook. I can clear out the price and then click the little refresh button to get the price to show up as you see here on the right hand side. And then I can also delete a stock. So all the exact same functionality that we had as the React and the Angular versions of the implementation, um, but instead we're here doing it with uh, Vue. And you can see it looks the exact same because we're using the Office UI Fabric core CSS uh, styles that we have. Um, you can see here that we've got some of the older elements too that we have, like using the core CSS, we have an older st um, spinner that we have instead of using the React Fabric ones. And so this is how we built our application using uh, Vue.